Hey everyone, and welcome to a uh, second edition of the whiteboard series on the uh, GTAC Close Air Support channel with uh, your host, Rifle. Um, the last video we did some keyhole stuff, something that was very popular and in demand. And now we've been getting a host of uh, questions regarding uh, what came from that video and some other stuff I've just been playing on DCS uh, with. So what I want to do then is we're going to take a step back and kind of graze over the whole big picture. And we're going to do a nine line video today. What I'm doing here right now is I've been able to gather a, a picture from uh, call sign leg iron out at MCAS Yuma. And this is one of the maps that they provide uh, open source to uh, the public. And it gives you Southern Arizona and then the border with the United States and Mexico that's uh, located just down in here. If you're able to see my crosshairs and as a JTAC today, I'm going to be at this place here in, in Yodaville. We're going to flesh out the nine line and we're going to say that we're just going to drop a, a JDAM today. It's a GPS guided munition and how you get there using the nine line because it's, it's become very apparent that you know, we've got guys on the channel that are professionals, fantastic. And then we talk about some stuff and there are others that really need to start from like a crawling and move into a walking position before we start running with more complex theories for close air support. And so thanks again for joining me and let's, let's do that right away. Uh, the, the area here that we're looking at is, is massive. How does it work to get to the nine line? I want to go quickly into the uh the the big picture and we got two ips here uh, or not necessarily ips but just points these are known points called uh, hoosier or hosier and san fran these areas here an outside controlling agency not necessarily jtac will say hey man i want your flight twenty thousand feet and you're gonna hold between these two guys the reason they're going to do that if they do it is because down here i want to choose the circle here today is this is not to scale but what it is i'm doing is i'm creating the jtac a no color and i want this to be thick a ROS. so what's a ROS? you're asking a ROS is a restricted operation zone so on the target area itself is going to be a grid location and from there this is something popular that I had in Afghanistan is my own airspace surface to about 25,000 feet, five nautical miles around or about 9,200 uh, meters. This airspace belongs to me. And so from there, the back to the top between uh, San Fran and, and Hoosier, whatever that, that thing is, the aircraft would then be told contact the JTAC on this frequency. And so with that said, if I'm doing IPs, because today we're going to fill out the IP uh, section in the nine line, uh, then what's going to happen quite simply is I'm going to say, yep, gotcha. You're the only air player in the area. First thing I start with using the 12 steps is always your routing and safety of flight. Thanks for letting me know where you're at. Now get in closer to me. That's yellow. I don't want to do that. Oh, that's a highlighter. That's why. So let's not make that yellow. And now I want you to come down to Dolphin and Colt. And let's say we'll just keep them at 20,000 feet. When I'm telling them to park between Dolphin and Colt, I know that they're going to be between those two points. Because if I just say Colt, uh, let's use a Viking here, for example. I want you to hold that Viking. The, do I know they're doing this? Or are they doing this? Are they doing something like this? You have to micromanage to a certain degree. I don't have the perfect solution for that, but you get an idea of why I'm doing hold between Dolphin and Colt. Um, so now the Yodaville picture, because this is pretty big. And again, my five nautical miles is not to scale. What does that kind of AO look like? Excuse me. Well, it looks like this. So this guy I'm going to bring to front. So it's going to, and this is what we're looking at. <clears throat> okay, just so it's a little bit more clearer. The JTAC position is going to be here. And, and this one is to scale. Uh, this is a, like a sniping uh, picture from uh, Hogview. So it's like it takes Google Maps. And it's really to design 
close air support missions. So if you uh, want to Google hog view, this is a fantastic tool. And so this is what I'm looking at five nautical miles. All right. And it's just like a, a ruler and this is more for the keyhole stuff. And that'll be a different uh, video at the moment for that. And then let's, let's zoom in even, even more to what it is that we're working with here today and bring to front. This is the Miro app that I'm using today. This is fantastic. And now this is the micro picture of what the JTAC is uh, in fact working with. I had something, there we go. This guy here, bring to front as well. And now we can start zooming in. We wanna populate this thing. So before we do that, let's just give ourselves a few things to look at here today. I want to take a shape again and right here the real life this is called the 300 meter op and we'll give it a color blue for the friendlies and that's going to be the jtac position jtac's looking up there and he's looking down into yodaville proper targets triangle always good thing to have colors red fantastic and remember how we saw the the larger picture, our aircraft are at the IP that was called, what do you call it again there? If I was going to bring that to the front, uh, we said Colt. Okay. So let's say that Colt is in fact about, um, not zero nine zero, we'll call it zero eight five. Let's just remember that. And then of course my shapes disappeared. It doesn't matter. Right now, what we want to be able to do is create the nine line. So as I'm doing this, now we're going to start writing stuff in. We know that there's a position that the aircraft are parked at, and we want the beginning of the nine line. So line number one is our initial position, and that's going to be Colt. Fantastic. And then we said to come into Yodaville. All right, they're coming in on a 085. And then we're going to get into some uh, weeds here. So degrees magnetic, 085. Sorry, it's going to be the offset of that. So 270 from Colt. And then uh, the back bearing would be a 260. Initial point or the battle position. All right. The, this is what I want to talk about is the offset. So let's call it 260. So that's going to have the aircraft. This is 270 like this. Just straight shot west like that. I'm going to come in slightly lower 260, which is fine. But as the weapon is coming in, I want to do an arrow. Cool. So if that's 270, it's not a huge change. That's 260. And we're going to say that our weapon is a GBU 38. Not a big deal. But as it's going to go over the target, if it falls short, the fragmentation might go up here, you know, the 300 meters or 200 meters to the OP. That's the friendly position. I don't want that. That's where the offset of uh, this heading happens. So the pilot now knows he's departing Colt on a heading of 260. And to hit his parameters that we're going to get into in the bottom here, the final attack heading, we're going to offset him and we're gonna say right. I gotta remember that I left it on caps. That's it. And then so from the target to Colt, I don't know what the true distance is, but we're gonna call it 22. It's 22 miles, nautical miles. Now, everything that was already um, so whatever vehicle that we selected in there, I'm pointing at my screen right now as if you, anyone could actually see what, what I'm doing, uh, elevation one, two, three, four. So from your JTAC OP, uh, which I want to repopulate there just so people aren't uh, confused about anything. You're able to see the target. You've got a binoculars and a map. You're able to get a pretty decent target elevation. And what is it yet that you're looking at? This is an easy day. All right, I'm looking at a car. So now the pilot's going to be able to weaponeer 
what it is that he or she is actually bringing to the fight. And then your target location. There's a number of things that we can talk about here, but we're going to keep it simple with target coordinates. All right. Uh, let's talk about these numbers really quick. This is a six figure grid, one, two, three, five, six, seven. And really like if, if, if it was as accurate as possible, there's an error of a hundred square meters there, or that's the area it's covering. But when the pilot puts his targeting sensor on that location, he's going to be able to zoom in a little bit. He's going to see way more than that. So, uh, what I'm getting at is after the target location, what kind of mark are we going to do? In this case, maybe it's a talk on. There's a video on that. Please check out the channel and you can see how we're doing a talk on. So I'm going to use words, looking at the map, seeing what it is I see with my Mark 1 eyeball about finding the, uh, the actual target. And the pilot's going to have to read back to me about what they actually see. And I'm hoping that they talk about things that I haven't mentioned to make sure that it is, in fact, the same thing that we're talking about. Uh, 300 meter OP. And so I'm able to say that Northwest, 300 meters, friendlies. Okay. In this case, uh, let's say it's daytime. Maybe we have like a VS-17 panel marker. Uh, or you could use flares, anything like that, or you don't even have to be marked either. You know, you could be concealed. Now, we already know that to the south of here, we've got the country of Mexico. So whether it's a gun target line uh, or someone else's airspace and things like that, where do I want to egress to? Well, I want my aircraft to go back to Colt if they have to do a reattack. Uh, they could go into the overhead if I wanted them to, but in this case, I'm going to go north back to Colt in your block. And now I've created a nine line. That's it. The only thing that I want to be able to articulate at the moment, um, just make sure that I've, I've covered everything is going to be that final attack hitting. So we told them 260 and right. So 260 looks roughly something like this, right? Because 270 is, is pointing straight shot west. So as the pilot is coming in this way, uh, let's see here, because we want the fragmentation of the bomb to go south away from the friendly location. That's why we're doing this offset. So as the pilot's shooting in this way and now he's going to offset right. So if you can imagine he's he's going down northwest, he's going to turn his aircraft to the right, but it's in order to meet his final attack heading. So his final attack heading on this target right there can look something more along the lines of, and then that would be in the remarks, final attack heading between, and you want to be generous with a cone just to give the pilots more space, but it is a JDAM, and uh, so it'll be easier to manage than if it was a, a, a laser guided bomb or a dumb bomb. So final attack heading, let's make it between 220 and 245. Let's say something like that. So now the pilot who has now offset right and I can no longer change this arrow for some reason, the direction, there we go. Now that weapon is coming in more along these lines like this, where the spray of the weapon is going to be towards the south, southwest. I think that's the best way that I can explain it. Looking back at the first picture that we saw, that big, big macro picture and work our way down to how the JTAC is able to see the ground and was able to generate a nine line. I think with the explanation, uh, there's also a, a type one control video out there on the, the channel, which goes through like a DCS simulation. However, you're seeing how and why the nine line has to come together. And this is when you have time, you can always shorten it, abbreviate it to something about five lines. 
But for those that are truly trying to uh, like wrap their heads around this, that's your nine line. That's it again for our second uh, series in whiteboard. The next one will just generate another quick nine line, but it'll be with a keyhole CAS and we're going to do a laser mission with it for a little bit more final attack heading fun with that. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheers.